Hello, hello, hello. We are back with episode eight of Bedtime Stories with Miss Byrne. And I am going to get right into it because in case you forgot, when we ended chapter seven, the Easter egg hunt began. So we are finally there. And let's see who is going to win this Easter egg hunt and find the golden egg. Remember chapter eight was called Swooping. Hmm. The children ran. They ran everywhere, I tell you. They ran to and fro, up and down. They ran back and forth and here and there. Also, Roger ran sideways, and Lenny ran in a circle. I watched them very fascinated. Some of the children were tackling and scuffling. Sheldon went through a shrub. That's when Lucille's daddy blew his whistle again. Tweet, tweet, tweet. Everybody, come back here now, he shouted real mad. Everyone came back. Sheldon had a stick in his ear. He sputtered and stuttered and pointed at May. <laughs> she pushed me. She pushed me. May pushed me through a bush. May stamped her foot. No, I did not, Sheldon. I did not push you. You pushed yourself, she said. She turned and looked at the daddy. It was the darndest thing you ever saw, she said. He shoved himself right through that shrub. The daddy stood there a real long time. Then he walked to a picnic bench and he sat down real slow. And he hit himself in the head. <laughs> I went over and tapped on him. I would just like to point out that the bunny did not run, I said. The bunny was the only one who walked. May overheard me. That's because the bunny can't run or the bunny falls down, she called. The bunny should not get credit for that. The daddy hit himself in the head again. I walked back to Herbert. He looked kind of worried. The daddy is coming unglued, he said. I nodded. Yes, I said. The daddy is going to need backup, I believe. Backup is the grown-up word for the police might need to come, possibly. And guess what? Me and Herb were not the only ones thinking that either. Because just then, Lucille's Nana hollered out real loud. Enough! She hollered. I have had enough of this nonsense with you children. Then she cupped her hands around her mouth and she shouted out a brand new rule. It was called, If there's any more running or fighting, she is going to call the cops. All of the children did a loud gulp. I looked at Herbert. That new rule seems a little harsh, I said. Only guess what else? The new rule worked, I think. Because pretty soon, the Nana started the egg hunt again. And this time, no one ran at all. No one even walked, hardly. Instead, we all behaved like little ladies and gentlemen. And we hunted for eggs very polite. May stuck to Sheldon like glue. I tried to stick to him too, but my giant feet could not keep up that good. May kept on grouching. You're not going to get the golden egg before I do, Sheldon. Even if you know where it is, I'll still beat you to it, she said. I'm all over you like flies on egg salad. Sheldon rolled his eyes. But I don't know where the golden egg is, May, he said. I've already told you that I don't know anything at all. I cupped my mitts around my mouth. I believe you, Sheldon. I believe you don't know anything at all, I shouted. I've never thought you've known anything at all. <laughs> After that, I hurried to catch up to him because I definitely thought he knew something, of course. Sheldon turned to wait for me. Then, all of a sudden, he glanced down at the ground and he did a loud gasp. <gasps> I see one, I see one, I see one, he shouted. May and I turned to look. There was a bright green egg under the bushes. Sheldon clapped and laughed. Then he hurried over to pick it up, but whoosh, swoop, scoop. Who do you think got it? May ducked underneath him speedy fast and she picked it up instead. 
I got it, I got it, I got it, she screeched. Then she put the egg in her basket and danced all around. Sheldon's face got supery mad. But before he could even yell at her, he did another gasp. I see one, I see one, I see one, he shouted even louder than before. Then he clapped his hands and he laughed real happy and he hurried over to pick it up, but whoosh, swoop, scoop. May beat him to it again. Uh-oh. Looks like May's winning. Two, two, now I have two, she hollered. She jumped in the air and kicked her feet. I swooped, I'm a swooper, I swoop, she said. She ran back to Sheldon and leaned in his face. I knew I would beat you at this game, she said. Now I have two eggs, and you and Junie B have... She leaned her head into our baskets. Hmm, let's count them. Zero. Ha! Huh. You have zero, and I have two. Two to zero. Two to zippity zip zero. Sheldon looked at me real upset. I frowned my eyes at him. Helpful hint, I said. Stop shouting, I see one. Sheldon pointed at his magic egg shirt. But I just don't get it, Junie B, he said. My grandpa said that the egg is with me. So why isn't this magic shirt working? I looked closer at the egg dribble. Maybe it's not lucky. Maybe it's just dirty. Sheldon slumped his shoulders. Then he reached down his finger and he flicked off the egg. Only wait till you hear this. Just as he flicked it, his eyes got big and wide again. This time I hurried to cover his mouth with my hand, but Sheldon shouted right through my palm it. I see one, I see one, I see one, he shouted. Then, before he could even move his feet, whoosh, swoop, scoop, May grabbed egg number three. She twirled in a happy circle around us. Three to zero, three to zero, it is three to zero, she yelled. Sheldon stood real still. Then, very slow, he put down his basket. And he stretched out the sides of his mouth with his fingers. And he stuck his tongue out at May. <laughs> that was appropriate behavior, I believe. After that, he snatched his basket up again, and he tried to rush away from May. But too bad for Sheldon, because May stayed right exactly on his heels. They were walking too fast for me to keep up. I stopped and watched them go. Then I did a big sigh, and I walked to the tree stump, and I sat down very glum. I hate being this dumb bunny, I said. Because my feet are too big, and my legs are too slow, and my palmets are way too clumsy. I slumped my shoulders and looked in my empty basket. I did another sigh. Because let's face it, this bunny was a rotten egg. All right, so, so far, not so good for Junie B or for Sheldon. Okay, but I'm looking at the title of chapter nine and I think things might get a little better. Chapter nine is called Lucky Bunny. And remember, there's only 10 chapters, so we're very close to the end. All right, so I will see you back here tomorrow night for chapter nine. Fingers crossed that things get a little better for Junie B here. I feel a little bad for her. <laughs> All right, have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.